Professor Miller here uh, with our weekly lecture. This week we're going to focus on goal setting and goals, goals and goal setting. So we can put our thing, goals up here. How do we achieve them? And then goal setting. Um, the number one issue after we set goals, what do we have to overcome? Well, it's that dreaded word. Pro. Procrastination. So when we look at procrastination, we look at, oh, I set some goals, how am I going to do it? Um, the first thing is you have, to you have to identify that you procrastinated. So when you find out you, you procrastinate a little bit, the number next step is just to look at it and just do it. Yep, the old Nike phrase, just do it. So the thing that, what I'll give you next is how we can overcome this uh, mentality of procrastination and just do it. Two, one. So we're dealing with procrastination and we want to just do it. How do we do that? Well, we have two methods. There's going to be two methods I'm going to give you. The first one is the 15 minute rule. And with this um, method, you set a timer for 15 minutes, and then you start trying to complete your task and going through and seeing what you get done, what you don't get done. So an example for school would be 15 minutes you have to read. Okay. Then you have to review your notes. And then maybe you have to practice quiz, take practice quiz. Um, so how do we take and, and do that? So can you break it up and read? Can you take a 15 minute block of time? Can you read it? Can you review your notes and then take the practice quiz? Um, and so that's where it determines whether you are able to accomplish the 15 minute rule. And through that rule, you'll see, hey, maybe I need more time to read. Um, I need more time. Maybe I need to take each one of these and make them a separate task so that now, I have 15 minutes, but now my total time is 45 minutes. Sorry, that's a bad. 45 minutes time frame to do these tasks. So again, we take 15 minutes, we read for 15 minutes, we review our notes for 15 minutes, and then we take our practice quizzes for 15 minutes. And again, that takes 45. So if you have that time frame and you have five classes, all of a sudden you're looking at almost four hours of time that you're going to have to dedicate to study. Um, so that's one, one step. The second step is chop it up. So with chop it up, we can take certain tasks and break it up into different little parts. So again, it goes back to our, our, our example of a reading, uh, reviewing, And then quizzes. So you take each one of these and you break it up in the 15 minutes. So now, say that you want to do, you can chop it up. You can do one separately or you can read for five, review for five, and then take a quiz. So it's one of those things that you have to do, chop it up, chop each class up, um, chop each, each one of the things up that you have to do. If you try to do it all at once, it's kind of like Thanksgiving dinner. Nobody ever just cooks Thanksgiving dinner. They, they have separate tasks. So you put the turkey in at one point, you put potatoes in, you do bread, you do different things. So you chop it up and keep it task oriented so you can accomplish it in certain time frames. Let's talk about the four P's, four P's of goal setting, of goals. First one, they must be positive. positive goal. I am going to run a mile in nine minutes. That's a positive goal. Okay. I'm not, well, I'm going to try or I, maybe I'll run in that. It must be, I am going to run in nine minutes. Um, so it has to be positive and, and accomplishable. Make it personal. 
I know that Tom can run a seven minute mile. I'm not gonna be able to do that. But personal, I am going to run a nine minute mile or I'm going to run an eight minute mile. Make it about you, not about the class. I wanna to get to be the best student in the class is not personal. I'm going to get the best score that I can get. It needs to be possible. Now my running example would be not very smart, not very good on my part to say, I'm gonna run a six minute mile. Probably at my age and my abilities, I'm not gonna be able to do that. But I can run a nine minute mile, I could also run an eight minute mile. So you need to figure out what is possible, what you know you can or can't do, and then make that part of your goal. The last part is prioritize. So for prioritizing goals, say that we have four classes, okay? And I'm gonna write over here. So you have a math class, you have a history, history, you have JAG tracks, um, you have biology, and say you have an English class. So you're sitting there going, well, what do I want to do today? Well, I like JAG tracks. I like Professor Miller's lectures. Um, so I'm going to do that one, number one. Um, and then you go, well, history, I'm pretty good at history, so I'll do that secondly. And then I like English. I'll do that third. I should say put number one, two. I'm not very good at math. I don't want to deal with it, so I'll make that four. And biology, uh, so I make that number five. Well. In realistic terms, that's not what we need to do. When we prioritize, we need to look at what's going to be the most difficult. Remember, going back to our just do it model, two most difficult, biology and math. So probably maybe biology is hard, so I do that number one. Math is probably my second, I'll do that number two. Um, I probably need to focus on my writing skills, so I'll do that three. History, I can study and get away with four. Oh, and then there's JAG tracks, even though I like Miss Professor Miller. Um, that'll be my fifth. So you really do need to prioritize those and, and prioritize your classes and your study time. Okay, so we've dealt with procrastination. We've dealt with the four Ps. Um, what is the next issue that you have to face when setting goals? And it comes back to what we talked about in the second week of class. I'm going to move this over a little bit, sorry. Time management. Um, time management becomes a critical key for you as a student to maneuver through um, through life. Now, in that lesson, I gave you the, the matrix. We have urgent, not urgent. We have important and not important. So remember, when you get the tasks here in this circle, Important and urgent means that you may have a test tomorrow and you haven't studied. That becomes very important, very urgent. Um, if you have used time management wisely, you might know you have a test coming up next week and you can get it into this block and know that it's important to study, it's not urgent. Um, if it's not important and not urgent, okay, maybe I'll study two weeks away or I have a paper that's due that's not really going to affect my grade much, um, but it is due like our papers, so you get it in here. We want to avoid this area, okay? That's the stuff that we don't want to get trapped in here. So when you look at your time management box, you figure out where you want to be at, get that matrix going. So when we talk about our time management, we talk about the 80-20 rule, which says that 20% of, of our effort leads to 80% of our successes. So how do you manage that? How do you go through and say, boom, um, I've got to realize that if I focus in here, I'm gonna get more successes over here. So it's something that if you can take that 20%, so say that we take 20% of 60 minutes, right? So we take 20% of 60 minutes, which is about what? So we go do our math, right? 20, 20 into 60, so we get three minutes, right? But so, but in, in reality, what we're saying is, is that if you take, again, if you take 20% of that time 
and spend it doing stuff and, and take that day and get those tasks accomplished, boom, you can get there. So again, 20% doesn't seem like a lot, but it, it can be. Um, and the second part, second area that you can do, we use 80-20, is calendar things. So use a calendar to keep everything organized, keep your, your things going, pressures, you know, situations going on, and then create a ritual. So, and we've talked in class, I always talk about me and my flossing and brushing and my teeth and, and when I get up and steps that I go through. It's become a ritual to me. Um, but it also gets my day started in a way so that I know, and I, I know that my calendar, again, my calendar is I have to be here in my office hours two days, office hours two days a week. So I calendar that, I know when I'm gonna be here. And when I get here, I gotta focus this effort, my 20% effort, so I know that out of a 60 minute day, I may have to focus a lot more effort on certain things, but 20% will go into that. And that will give you a way to kind of situate yourself and be prepared to do things better. So the next area I wanna talk about is what we call our to-do characteristics. How do we get characteristics, um, or, stay, or, or how do we get our to-do list done? So the first thing is we focus on the important. So the interesting part of that is what's important? Well, if you have a test next week, it might be important. If you have a test in three weeks, it might not be so important. Okay, so think about focusing on what's important each week. Um, we're gonna talk about goal setting, but each month, if you look at it each, if you start your ritual of on Sunday, you look at the upcoming week and say, okay, I've classed this. But if you start pushing that out two weeks in advance, you start marking tests down on your calendar, you all of a sudden you'll start seeing a pattern that you can focus on what's important and keeping it in, in control and, and, observ and observations of what's coming up. The next part is to what we call um, chunk block and up oh, block that shouldn't be there sorry and tackle so with this we take our study days or our classes and we chunk them up we say i want to do this on this day and then we block out some time for it okay and then we tackle it so for me in my running example i have a six day running calendar so I chunk up my running to train and I chunk it up into six different blocks. I block time frames for each task that I have to do. So certain days I have to do speed work, certain days I have to do hill work, certain days I wanna focus on long runs, and certain days I just wanna focus on a pace run. And other times I'm focusing on recovery. So I block out times. So for different runs I have different time frames that I use. And then as the days come along I tackle it. So this can be with your, again, we go back to our math, history, um, English, uh, biology, and JAG tracks um, example. So you want to chunk up. What do I need to do? When do I need to study? How much more time do I need on my math? Do I have a day that I'm not distracted or I don't have classes in my biology so I can block more time out for that? Um, a day that I have a lot of distractions or, or minimal ones, I can do my English and my history. And then on um, my days that I know I'm gonna be really, things are gonna be tight and I need just a little bit of time, I can focus on Jag Truck. So you block it out how you need it or you chunk it out, okay? On Tuesdays I don't, or on Wednesdays I don't have class so I'm gonna tackle my math and my biology, and I'm gonna do that from 12 until one. Um, so you block, chunk, block, and tackle it. And then the last part of that is to make it a habit. Okay, and if you do it every day, every week, if you come in and you do this, you, you chunk, block, and tackle on Wednesdays, you know that all of a sudden on Wednesdays, and all of a sudden you'll be on Wednesday going, hey, what are I gonna do? Oh, I gotta do my, Eng I gotta do my math and my biology. Um, and even if you get to the point where when you have the time, if in the beginning of it, of it, you had to do it for 30 minutes, maybe because of the 15 minute rule and the process as we've gotten better, you lower the time required, 
okay? So it's something that you have to think about and you have to plan ahead. The last part is planning. How do we plan to do this? Put it in this format to make it work for us and then plan it out and then make it a habit. And things will go a lot smoother for you in class and, and in life. So for the last part of this lesson, we're gonna smoke us on, focus, smoke us. We're gonna focus on what they call smart um, goals. S-M-A-R-T, smart. Number one, they're specific. Okay, so my specific goal might be that I want to run a 5K race in 24 minutes. Okay, so it's very specific. The second part, it must be measurable. Um, so in my example, 24 minutes is measurable because we're gonna start the clock when I start running, I cross under the thing, and then when I cross back under it at the end, they're gonna give me a time. And I can measure, did I meet my goal or did I not meet my goal? Must be attainable. So if I set a goal that I'm gonna run, uh, 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 let's say a five minute mile, I'm gonna run the, uh, the 5K race in 15 minutes. Probably not attainable for me. Um, more likely for me, I can look at maybe 7.45 a minute to nine minutes would be my, my attainable time frame that I can run. Um, so I keep it attainable that I can do that. And then realistic. Um, and realistic means that I've focused on it enough I know I can accomplish that. Is it real for me to be able to run a 7.45 minute mile when I haven't been training for the last three months? No. Um, more like I can run a nine minute mile if I've been training, yeah. Make it realistic um, and, and make it so, and then timely. So timely becomes a very interesting thing when we talk about it because can I say that, okay, on Friday I'm gonna go run a 5K in 18 minutes not timely enough. I can't do that because I didn't, I wasn't realistic and I didn't attain it because I didn't set a very good set of goals. So when we talk about smart goals, we talk that they're specific. You identify what you want to do. You can measure it, um, attainable. So in an example of our class, say you want to say, I want to get an A in this class. Is it measurable? Yes. Is it attainable? Yes. Because we know if you attend and do all your work, you can get it. Um, get an A. Is it realistic? Yes. Every student can get an A. Is it timely? In a 16-week frame, if you do this, 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 and this, you're going to achieve that goal. Okay, so in wrapping up um, our last part for class on Tuesday, here's what I want you to do. There, for class, there are two videos that I want you to watch um, about goal setting. Okay, watch the two videos. I think one's five minutes, one's like eight, so you got a little bit of time. So I give you timeliness. Isn't that nice? My hand shows up. Oh, look at my hand. It's blue from doing all this. Um, the other thing that happens is you will bring two goals. And those must be written. Two goals to class. And one will be a short-term goal. Short-term goals are generally less than a year, okay? So it can be accomplished. Um, I, I always say less than a year, less than one year. And then a long-term goal. So long-term goals are longer than a year. So your long-term goal could be, I'm going to complete my college degree in four years. Or your long-term goal could be, I'm gonna complete my college degree in three and a half years. Or I'm going to complete my college degree in five years. Um, so you can see, and it falls into the SMART, it's specific, um, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's realistic, and it's timely. Okay, so now I, I would like for you to, oh, this, I should have put more, oh, more than a year. Um, so I'd like for you to sit down and think about it. Again, it's a reflective thing. I would like for you to reflect. What's your short-term goal? Um, your short-term goal could be to get a 3.5 this semester. So you know what you'd have to do to attain a 3.5. You're going to, depending on how many classes you have. Um, and your long-term is to graduate in four or five years. Okay, so hopefully this made sense. Hopefully we're having fun again. Um, I will see you on Tuesday.